Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, home equity can generate tax-free income. Part three of our series on home equity solutions in retirement with financial advisor, Eric Brash. Welcome to the show again, Eric. Thank you. It's good to be here. We're here in segment three. We're going to focus in now on reverse mortgage for income. You know, we talked a little bit about last uh, segment. Hey, you could do a lump sum on this. You could do a time certain on it, too, 10 years if you just needed it. I want to talk about it for income for a second. An equity loan is not characterized by the IRS as income. Therefore, it doesn't show up on your 1040. That's correct. Therefore, it's not includable in Social Security's provisional income test to find out if your Social Security benefits get taxed. That's exactly right. Now, there's this is this is good because a lot of people don't realize this. Listen, if you're middle American, you Social Security is all you have. Mm-hmm. Your equity position is all you have. You could maybe, maybe cobble together with your deductions and your exemptions to offset your Social Security income, no tax there, and you'd have no tax with a home equity conversion mortgage, reverse mortgage income. I mean, you'd have no tax. Yes, that's exactly right. So for people that are middle class or a little below that are skating the issue, this could be huge for them. This could be a, be a, a, a make or break in a lot of cases for people. Okay, now, of course, I'm all for, you know, waiting till age 70 to pull this off. And one of our first things I want to talk to you about this, lifetime income. So they're going to calculate the home. Let's say it's, uh, you know, let's say we go to the heck of limits right now, 636150 Correct. So let's say you're just 62 and you're going to pay somewhere around, I don't know, 315 to 318000 but you're done then. Correct. You're, all right. Yes, exactly. I'm, all right. I, I'm sorry. I'm buying a home here. Uh, but, <laughs> but, yes, you're, you're gonna, they're going to take that number and they're going to amortize it over the, your life expectancy. Mm-hmm. Now, when they do that, uh, sometimes I sit there and I go, if I have a really long life expectancy, it seems like the Heckam life expectancy calculators are a little bit behind the curve here compared to what we use in annuities mm-hmm. or financial planning. Have you found that to be true? Uh, in, in certain circumstances, yes, that's the case. They will go out to 100 is where they're typically, when you do the 10-year program, mm-hmm. tenure meaning you're not a 10 years, but tenure meaning monthly income for life, mm-hmm. um, they'll go to age 100. Mm-hmm. And and does that mean there's no payment after 100 then? That's typically the case. They they'll you actually have you have until age 100 and I believe it's 150 odd depending on what what uh-huh. your number is to to not have to make a payment. So All right. so well, yeah well that's a future future. In fact actually uh, and we'll get into this in the next segment of what I did to give a little gravitas to this whole scene. Mm-hmm. But when I'm taking income, I like the first part. It's free. It's not characterized as income. It's not going to be taxable. Correct. It's not going to fall on my provisional income test for Social Security taxation. Love that. Right. Now, I've been choosing a little bit of this Heckam strategy with our people, with, with, with a lot of our seniors, mm-hmm. my, my retirees, my mm-hmm. brethren of the, we were the children of the 60s, now we are in our 60s, right? right? Um, I'm looking at this and saying, I'm trying to delay you taking Social Security when only, and I think I mentioned this in the first uh, segment, hey, only 5% of, less than 5% take, oh, wait till 70 but I could use a Heckam loan to get me from age 62 to age 70 to offset income, try to push my maximum benefit out. That's correct. You can do that. You can do a period certain, similar to a period certain on an annuity, uh, which would generate the most amount of income for you. For instance, if you were at 62 years of age and you did, let's say, on your $300,000 example, you did a 15-year tenure to pay that back, that's several thousand dollars a month. That would <laughs> definitely uh, finance you until you get to an age, age age later at seventy to take the Social Security. Well, I've I've been looking at the combo. Look, I'm looking at Social. What's your Social Security benefit? Sixty two. What's my heck of reverse mortgage? The reverse mortgage usually usually blows it away. Very much so. So so we're comparing. That's one good reason. By the way, if well, let's say I get to seventy, do I can I, can I stop? Taking payments? I just wanted to get to 70. Could I stop taking payments? Yes, you definitely can. Okay. Do, do, could I pay it back if I wanted to pay you back can. those eight years? You can always pay the loan back at any time. At any time. You can actually continue to make payments if you so choose to. If you want to. It's it's not so much a, cu- oh, a yes or no. Mm-hmm. I like to think of home equity loans, or I'm sorry, home equity conversions as a pay as you want, as mm-hmm. an option program. There are several people who have done these that maybe they only pay the interest. Uh, they don't need to pay to principal. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of equity. They don't need to, but it's there if you need to. Now, what if I get used to the money coming in? I'm going like, hey, you know, I've taken it for eight years. Could I keep going? You certainly can. 
depending on what you how you've structured it. If mm -hmm. you structured at a 15 year period certain, you would have to revisit that, mm -hmm. and you can do a refinance of a home equity conversion. Mm -hmm. It's called a home equity a heckum to heckum loan. And so, so that's available. Exactly right. Wow, you can that's, re that's revisit really those numbers and those factors. Okay, so I want to be able to. So if I need it for income. I'm going to use it for income. Hey, I may not need it for a lifetime. I'm going to see what that is. Right. Remember, you need to sit down with your financial planner. You also need to know your propensity for risks and your other investments as well as, and I can't stress this, what is your life expectancy? Some people, they have congenital issues in the family. They have, Nobody's up past 85. I get that. But this new wave of revolutionary longevity, you know, mm -hmm. I think my, my wife will probably easily increase age 95. No mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, you know, the, the boomers are the first generation. We're, we weren't thoroughly into exercise. We weren't thoroughly into um, eating right and so forth. But, but I think our gals were. Mm -hmm. So I think I, so you're going to see some, some new longevity uh, numbers for female boomers. But I think the people behind us, you know, X, Gen X, and mm -hmm. Y, and millennials, I think all these people are hip to this. And I see them living well into their 90s and 100s as a regular issue. Correct. And I think what you're also seeing from the, from the generations behind the baby boomers, like my generation, is the fact that they are concerned about where Social Security is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we're at uh, two to one. There's two people for every mm -hmm. one person on Social Security, where it used to be seven to, or eight to one. Mm -hmm. So that's a concern that, that my mm -hmm. generation has going forward. Will there be something mm -hmm. there for us? How, how will that work for us? You know, I, interestingly, I'm, I'm kind of a, a libertarian conservative by nature, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, sometimes you wonder, hey, you know, maybe the immigration policy, one of the good parts about having a liberal government is that, you know, <laughs> we're going to have people that come in here and work and bump that up to three to four to one again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just changed, we had a revolutionary change in our thinking. We're not having the type of children we had, the, the number of children we had and so forth. So that could be a change in the way we're, we're looking at. Okay. So I like the idea of being able to, to say, I'll take it to age 70. I like the idea I could do it for 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to get an inheritance, so I won't need it after that. Mm -hmm. I would like the lifetime. Now, 60, got to be 62. Again, I just I keep saying it to cover our, our uh, you know, Arizona missions. Got to be 62. Correct. Somebody. One of the, the one, married couple. Right. Two, it's got to be your prime residence. Correct. Hey, in our view, you need to make this your home. The, the home. And here's another caveat to that that people don't know. Uh, some people have multiple houses, mm. two and three houses, uh, rental houses. Um if it's because it's an FHA loan, the other house that you own has to, the house that you're doing this on has to not only be your owner occupied, but has to be at least 100 miles away from your other home. So that's something that a lot of people Ooh, don't understand. Well, well, now there's a new one for Steve Savant. I have right. to say, so I even have jurisdictions on how close the second home is? Mm -hmm. Wow, I can I can love bringing a measuring tape to Flagstaff. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, just did I make it? Yeah, you know? it's uh, right, right. Wow. It's, it, it's, it's a very loose uh, deduction of, of mileage, but mm -hmm. in they, they, it has to it has to look. You, you can't have two FHA loans at the same time. Mm -hmm. Oh, so but if you had a conventional, they wouldn't care. No, not at all. But if it's FHA, you Correct. have an FHA with your secondary home, and you have an FHA Correct. through the home equity. And that's merge. happened where where somebody goes to do this, somebody doesn't know that rule. A, a, a loan officer doesn't know that rule. Who's mm -hmm. not versed in this? All of a sudden, we get it into an underwriting situation. They say, wait a minute, you already have a government loan because they checked that mm -hmm. right, out, right early on. How many loans, where, you're, where are they at? When you do a government mm -hmm. loan, you can't have two of them, so you couldn't bear thereby unless it's, mm -hmm. unless it's a second home somewhere else. And, and you can't do a second home as long as it's, if it's not FHA participating, then you're, Correct. you're okay. Correct. All right, well, a huge, huge thank you for that extra information because I think that would change some people's thinking. Sometimes it does. And sometimes it does. Now, in our case, you know, you got to get it north enough to get out of Phoenix to make mm -hmm. the get out of the heat enough, and hopefully between here and Flag is, or, or you know, south of Tucson, it's 100 miles. Right. Hopefully it is too. Okay, so with those in, with those rules in mind, rules of engagement in mind, mm -hmm. I can get in as early as 62. Now, I noticed that my numbers go up. I just, I have to bring this up. It's age determinate. So I just had a person 73. His wife is 72. Their numbers are bigger than the 62, 62 person Correct. that I saw four months ago. Correct. Shorter it, it's, timeline, it's, what's it's going on? Every, it, it's similar to a Social Security. The longer you wait, the more it's worth because the less time you're going to have to draw on it. Or an annuity. The longer you wait, mm -hmm. the more it's going to be worth because you have less time to draw on it. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. The longer you wait for a Heckam loan, for a home equity conversion mortgage, the more it'll be worth because the less time you'll have to, to the less payments you'll have added to the mm -hmm. back end of the loan where you where the equity deteriorates. So this could be something, if you said, hey, I thought I missed the boat on this. I thought you had to be 62. No, you could be dropping in 
at 70, 80, whatever. Correct. And your premium or your income on the reverse mortgage, it just gets higher as you get. I don't think I can get an IRR like that anywhere. No. Especially tax free. Exactly. Well, don't forget to watch our next segment on buying a retirement home for half the market value. Part four of our series on home equity solutions in retirement. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game.